Welcome to beautiful Puerto Rico. You probably saw our video yesterday. I spent the day looking around at some of the very, very nice neighborhoods. But today, we're spending the day driving around, looking at the devastation that Hurricane Maria did seven months ago. Right here behind me is a ginormous wind farm. Uh, I gotta rain on the lens. Look at these things. They're like destroyed, like almost every one of them. It's actually really sad to see that. Think how much money they put into that. But what does a category five hurricane do to windmills? We're seeing it right now. Wow. Okay, I just walked up on this giant piece of the turbine that is broken. What's inside of one of these giant things? You got the styrofoam that's at the top. This that I'm looking at right here broke off of that giant windmill and flew over here in the field a half a mile away. And it's wrapped around this tree right here and got stuck in the trees. Look at that. Unbelievable, unbelievable. That's crazy. Not one of these ginormous wind power generators survived. As early as last week, the power was out for 36 hours across the entire island. And wind and solar are a huge part of keeping the sewer plants, the hospitals, the banks, crucial utilities are based off of these renewable energy sources. Also, Tesla is down here. Elon Musk has been installing tons of these solar farms and solar batteries to help this island. I'm gonna show you and take you along and see where we're at seven months later. You can see the power is out. We are in the heart of San Juan. So you just kind of have to four-way stop it. Oh, here we go. Whoa, we just found a ginormous solar panel farm. But not only that, it looks like they had solar panels there before the storm and they just got completely demolished. Like demolished, like they're cleaning them up right now. Right here on the side of the freeway, broken solar panels, glass just here. We've got piles of solar panels right there. The Hurricane Maria came through here, it wiped out almost the entire thing as the eye wall hit this area. Look at all that garbage right there. All solar waste. It goes clear over that way. This solar plant in particular provides 60% of the power to the local sewage plant. Part of like a $2 million investment by a private investor. They're actually rebuilding very, very quickly. I would imagine some insurance money was there. What's inside a solar panel? It's right there. It's pretty amazing to see this. That was insane. Why didn't these solar panels hold up? I mean, you know you're building these things in the Caribbean, in a, in a place where hurricanes come through. For the last 100 years, all of the hurricanes have turned at like the last minute and they haven't hit Puerto Rico. And it's just, it's kind of like this thing that locals thought, yeah, we're not gonna get hit by hurricanes. Some that we talked to last night, that's kind of what they thought. When Maria came through, the one that came through the week before just totally dodged it, just like normal. I mean, there's, there are giant containers down there of battery packs and inverters and everything. Whoa. So throughout the city, we have seen truck after truck after truck full of trees. They're cleaning them up all day long and then they bring them to different places to ditch them all. These are all fallen trees that they piled up. That's gotta be about 40 feet high right there. And this thing just goes on forever. It's a junkyard for trees. I'm not quite sure what they're going to do with them all. Firewood or wood chips or what, but I mean, that's step one. It's gotta be hard to put up power lines when you got fallen trees everywhere and to rebuild roads and everything when you just have trees everywhere. There's one of the trucks that just dropped off its load right there and it's driving away, going to pick up some more trees. There's our security right there, just chilling, hanging out, waving. There's a the truck with the trees. It's an everyday process in Puerto Rico. That's a lot of work. That takes a lot of government money to be able to pull off some process like this. We are in a building that was completely destroyed by hurricane and they've cleaned out all the stuff since. There's a vending machine. What's inside the vending machine? There it is. This is part of a hotel that was shut down after Maria came through. Look at this guys, are you seeing this power pole? Somehow because it has lines going both ways it kept it up, it's cracked right there and then it comes down, there's another crack. The crazy thing is guys, this is America. We are in America. I know it's not one of the 50 states. This is a territory, but this is America. And this is the kind of stuff that we're seeing. I've seen this in the Philippines where I was born and lived for a lot of my life. I've seen this in different parts of Mexico. To be in America and to have it look so ravaged by something seven months later and there's no signs of things getting fixed. We just drove through neighborhoods that there's no people in. So 
I know there are a lot of places that have recovered. It's still a great place to visit in San Juan for vacation purposes, but it's, they've got a lot to repair here. Oh! Oh! Jake, one of my childhood fears. Have you ever seen the show Arachnophobia? Yeah. <laughs> this is a living arachnophobia. Oh, I hope you can see this on camera. They look like black widows, just a full on family, um, like five generations of black widows. I don't do well with spiders, Jake. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Nope, that's as close as I'm getting. Let's get out of here. We've got power lines directly over my head that are held on by a sliver. We've got weird noises from critters in an abandoned old hotel. I mean, there's a mattress right there. There's a mattress. There's a mattress in there. The biggest termite hill I've ever seen. That looks like a termite. Like a mud hill, an uh, ant hill or something. Look, it goes all around. You can see it going up and around. See this? Look, on the walls. It's climbing on the walls. Going under here, those are not from vines. It leads directly to the mothership. Oh, it's not supposed to do that. I don't think that's gonna withstand another category five or four or Maybe three or one. two, or even a tropical storm, <laughs> or even a, Just a an afternoon rain, rain shower. <laughs> be down any second. Oh man. All right, so Jake's been the one to give us the tour. He's been like taking me around. He's come here a few times, so it's been really nice to have some help. But make sure you check him out on his Sea Taller's channel. We've done some stuff with him before with the ice cream truck, so um, we're gonna do some more things coming up pretty soon. Just sneaking in here. <laughs> you seriously scared me. What a punk. <laughs> Never mind, don't check him out. <laughs> Just kidding. we found the hospital. I can't believe that we actually did it. Look at this. These are all solar panels right here. Tesla solar panels. And then over there is a children's hospital. It's been seven months since the hurricane hit, but yet last week the power went out on the entire island. And so what the governor said was that he was prioritizing hospitals and banking centers. And so this right here is a children's hospital. And this is where Tesla has come in and put their solar panels they basically just took over the parking lot, put all these solar panels on here, and then they put their, their battery over there. And then what I think is interesting is over here, you can see that it's just all gravel. And I'm not sure, look, they're still putting the fence up right now, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be for um, a parking lot, maybe to expand it since they took over this part, or if they're gonna put more solar panels in. But kind of cool that even if the power goes out on the grid on the island, Tesla has it set up so that the hospital should be able to come online very quickly. Tesla has a thousand Tesla power walls, which is like this big bank full of batteries. And so what happens is these solar panels will collect the energy from the sun and store it in this giant battery pack so that at the moment that the power goes out on the regular grid, they can instantly transform over to the energy that's in the battery. What Tesla hopes to do is have Puerto Rico be kind of an example of to maybe possibly make an entire island off the grid and just have it be solar and batteries that run it. has been on the entire time that we've been here. Well, in a place like this where you know the power may go out at any time, I recommend bringing a battery pack. This is the one that's my favorite. This is the Crave Plus battery. With one battery, I can get three full charges easy, and it's a super fast charge on here. All right, so now that my phone is charging, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on the rebuilding process. What did you like today? What do you think was interesting? There's no perfect power source. I do like the alternative energy though, wind, solar. And yes, while we saw a lot of devastation with the different types of wind and solar, I don't want you to think, oh, we don't ever wanna make those because they're just gonna explode. You already saw, they're halfway done rebuilding the solar right now, so hopefully they build them a little bit stronger this time so they can withstand another hurricane like like Hurricane Maria. Hopefully Maria doesn't come through too. I'm excited for the future. You know that we drive an electric vehicle right now. I'm really into this type of renewable energy and I hope that more countries adopt what they're doing here in Puerto Rico. And a huge shout out to Tesla for stepping in and working with the governor to try to make schools and banks and hospitals all set up so that when there is an emergency, they can run off of their solar power batteries. So, anyway, 
That's the end for Puerto Rico. We're gonna get some milkshakes and uh, fly home tomorrow. See ya.